Hello, and thanks for joining me for this commentary track on from 2006, The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. I'm Von Fry, and I'm going to be hosting this. I have talked about the first installment, skip the second, more on that later, but I think that the series really picks up some steam with Tokyo Drift. So if you'd like to listen to this and watch along, go ahead, queue up your version of it. This is designed for Netflix viewing. It is a Netflix commentary track. It's leaving the service soon, but I think it will be back later, or you can watch it on another service. Go to 0000 and hit play now. Rated PG-13 for reckless and illegal behavior involving teens, violence, language, and I couldn't read fast enough. We have the ever-colorful Universal, what do they call this? Uh, there, there was a name for it. It, just, it looks like some kind of candy globe to me. I really didn't care for it. I prefer that one from Jurassic Park. Now, I did say that I talked about the original Fast and the Furious, and I posted commentary on that. I reviewed... Almost every film in the franchise, but as commentaries go, I thought I would skip Too Fast, Too Furious. And then I ended up doing a commentary track on it anyways. In part, Audacity shit the bed. It totally crashed at about 45 minutes in. I couldn't recover anything. I had the files there. It saves every 10 seconds, but there was no way to sort it effectively. And it just got to the point where it could have been easier to re-record it than to sort it out. And at that point, I was thinking, is this really worth it? Uh, probably not. Now, this is an odd beginning here. We are going back to high school. We have a younger crowd. It's almost entirely a new cast, and some would say this would be like the black sheep of the franchise. Really, I think Too Fast, Too Furious is. This one, and there's only a surprise cameo at the end, and they, hell, they, they shoehorn in the... Dom Toretto, uh, like little cameo in the TV spot. And here we are, Zachary Bryan, Zachary Ty Bryan, as you recall him being uh, billed in Home Improvement. And at the time here, I'm in college, and I know this guy's older than me. And I am like, are, are these high schoolers? Like, really? Now, You'll notice right off the bat, this has a warmer look to it. Look at the contrast. Look at the the white balance. Too Fast, Too Furious has a very bland look to it. And this one looks closer to the original film. And here we are with a montage showing a high school life, I guess. Not so much the study part, but... Uh, people being picked on, bullies, teachers could care less. We have some fanciful titles. Look at the way how they kind of rotoscope it in. They, they like, garbage mat crop out some of these titles. What's he going to do? Yeah, he backed down. Is that the same sort of thing that Dom had? Was it a torque wrench? I, I, they didn't say tire iron in the first one, right? Okay. I think this movie has an interesting conundrum, and it's very much like the Ring remake from 2002 with this issue, where it's stronger if you skip the beginning. You can skip, like, the first DVD chapter, the first scene of, well, almost you could, the first sequence, the first, everything dealing with the girls in the house in the ring, you can skip everything in this movie up to the guy getting to Tokyo and just be like, why is he here? Leave some mystery to it. Now, yes, you will miss out on a good car chase, one that is, I wouldn't call realistic in the means like, okay, here he is, talking about 500 horsepower stock and he has a Borla exhaust, 4.30 to 60. That's not that fast now. Like, I mean, if you got a 500 horsepower car, you're going quicker than that because you got a dual clutch or a, what, 810 speed automatic. This guy just loses his shit. Now, you can see here our hero, he's got racing tires. If it rained, he would be in a shitload of trouble. No tread on those tires. Those are slicks, those are for the track. Yes, this is 
hyperbole here. Uh, you could almost see the the shots here how, how they would have panned out in a graphic novel. Okay, we got the cool the cool dropping down of the, the torque wrench, uh, the stare down. How about this? Winner gets me. I only race for pink slips. My car costs eighty grand. Your piece of shit is like what? Everybody has gathered around to watch this. All, all the different backgrounds, the diversity at the high school. Come on, winner gets me. Give me a break. She's also certainly not in high school. I believe older than either of them by some years. We just so happen to have a course planned out. Look at that long straightaway. Yeah, this is uh, illegal for a multitude of reasons here. And you can see he's got a fairly serious looking uh, seatbelt. They got this thing going like they've done this before. And it's so played off. Like what the girl throws her bra out there. That with there's no hesitation, there's no it, anything. It's like, oh, this is what we always do. Yeah, everybody knows about racing at this school. I would think the Viper should be able to handle this. And now we're playing Kid Rock's Ba with the Ba, which is an odd choice because it seemed like an old song then. This song's from '99, so seven years old. It's it's not really a song of these high schoolers, right? Maybe it should have been a little more contemporary. Really, you guys need that good of a view of this? Look at, look at the way the camera's shaking. Uh, you get the sense that there's some real driving going on here, don't you? They're actually hitting some debris. It looks to me like that is a V10 Ram. So the, those each have the 500 horsepower V10. What is it, 8.4 liter from Chrysler? Uh, sadly, the Viper was, I think about a year ago, taken off production. It, just slow sales. You know what? If you only have a stick in a car, and the Viper's issue has always been that it is the most male-driven car. Women make up a lot of car drivers... So long as the laws are the way they are. Oh, Vaughn, why'd you have to go there? So why not make a car that will appeal to them a little too? No woman would drive it because it only had a stick. I'm saying you could have a faster Viper with the dual clutch. Anyhow, uh, it's a nice looking ride. I couldn't really tell you what... That, oh shit, I forgot what this guy's name even is. Uh, it's... Uh, what, Lucas Black? What's his character's name? And we are cutting through. This is a good race. This is actually... it. You know, I mean, as corny as all of this is with the setup, it sets up a race that is better than anything the franchise has had up to this point. Like, stylistically, this has it going on. And, all right, we're shifting around. We're, we're doing the little zoom out, you know, like we zoomed into the engine. Now we're going out the hole in the back. Good jump. I thought you loved me. Prove it by winning this race. And now she's like, oh, hey, I'm going to smile at this guy because he's he might just win. And now this guy is a violent psychopath right here. My car costs 80 grand, but I'm going to ram your piece of garbage. Plus, I obviously don't even like this chick. She said she's going to go to the prom with this guy, and I could care less for her well-being, right? I'll tell you what, this is uh, would be a frightening scenario to be a passenger here. Oh... Spun out the Viper. And you know that I know some of that's a little played up, but it looks pretty authentic. Got the camcorder out here, and uh, we are going to roll. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. 
Now, to do these kind of rolling scenes, you have a lot of CGI debris in the car, like the Tabasco sauce. Obviously, that doesn't look like glass. Shockingly enough, that rear window stayed intact. Look at the cool, calm, collected nature right here. He's got a little bit of Dom Toretto in him, doesn't he? Yep. So you rolled your car. Yep, look how cool I am. The rest of them are like, I am in so much trouble. I am in so much trouble. And he's like, hey. Oh, his mouth really got jacked up right there. Hey, you owe him. The winner of the race gets me. Oh, man. that Can you... I don't think kids could record that, honestly, back then. The lack of practice. They, didn't ha they weren't recording stuff on their phones. The iPhone went out for another year. Yeah, th that guy's rich. He's going to get a slap on the wrist. You, you're going to get deported. Now, does his hairline say high schooler? I mean, uh, uh, he's, he looks like... Ah, uh, shit, what... The, the guy that ultimately becomes the villain in Akira. Oh, his mom looks like a hooker. And she's going to attempt to seduce the cops. Maybe they'll be a little more lenient if I, uh... Hey, what you up to tonight, honey? It's a tough state, and it's a pretty clear-cut case. He'd be lucky if they don't try him as an adult. Well, he would be very lucky because he's, uh, I don't know, 23, 24 when this movie's made. They said strike three. Oh, man, yeah, that California with the strike three, it's a hard time. You get to that third strike. Nice transition coming up here. Uh, he, look at the background on his head and the way how these shots are matched. You wouldn't, you wouldn't off the hand realize that we are now looking inside the next scene. We are inside the what seven forty seven going across. Oh, what is that, five seats across? I haven't flown in a while. I haven't flown on a plane that big. Because I'm on the no-fly list for a reason, baby. Tokyo, Japan. You get an authentic Japanese culture thing going on with this movie. It, it, the film does a great job of trying to set that up. And it's introducing the Western audience to Japan and Japan's version of the car culture. It feels authentic enough. I, mean, I couldn't say firsthand. I haven't been to Tokyo. You get the sense that they actually shot a good deal of the film there. Uh, now, like an intersection like this, they end up making their own version of it for a scene where they drift through in a chase. It's just overload here. And he's seeing a lot of things that look familiar. The Kentucky Fried Chick and the McDonald's. It's a culture shock. It's a story that's a fish out of water. There's cars. There's redemption. It's a fairly solid screenplay as Fast and the Furious movies go. Now, say you haven't seen your dad in a while. Uh, and maybe the days are off because, oh, wait, we're a day ahead, blah, 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 something, whatever. You, maybe this could be a scenario here. Oh, Sean's his name, right? Okay, whatever. Today is the 7th. Oh, I thought it was going to be... Oh, hold on a second. I've got a uh, lady of the night visiting me. Is that legal in Japan? It very well could be. And she looks about my age. All right. Uh, yeah, she looks like, it, I don't know. Something has transpired. It looks a little sweaty. 
So, uh, it is what it is. Come in. <laughs> this is it. Uh, let's see. So, he's what? Expat Navy or Air Force, was it? And he's stationed in Tokyo at Navy. Is this a common quarters? I guess, I mean, you would accumulate stuff to some degree, right? And, I mean, he, he didn't buy this place assuming he'd have a guy living with him, right? And he gives him a room, and it's a shoebox. Well, Sean, you know she had no choice. Is this or Juvie? All right, fine. Yeah, ran away from your problems. Works for you, huh? Neither of us asked for this, but I promise your mom I take care of you. We know the guy has some street racing abilities. We saw how he did with the Viper. But he's going to get into a whole nother scenario. And I'm, I guess in a way, it's good that we had that chase. I just think there could have been a less cornier way to have set things up. And here's your room. Uh, a walk-in closet. Make yourself comfortable. Challenge. Oh, this would be rough. I I don't I, I realize he's not the tallest actor, but how does he lay across this? And look at this. Your your window is to the guy next door. Oh, savage. And now it's time to go to school already. Trying to figure out the alarm clock, eh? Train to school leaves at 0700. Trying to throw in that military uh, lingo in a way. Kind of let you know where he's coming from. Uh, now, there's a weird thing with Japan where they have... Uh, a lot of interest in a kind of like 60s surfer rock, and that's sort of what you're hearing right now with this Barracuda thing. There's also a lot of bands that become quite popular that are like jam bands. They don't have singers singing lyrics. So many bikes. So much confusion. Did he study any Japanese on the way over here? I guess this is maybe my class. And there is, oh gosh, I forgot her name. But she uh, likes to shed some clothes in Burning Man, if you want to look that up. All right, uh, not going to be learning very well. Boswell's son. Oh no, you've got the shoes on that are not the shoes we want you to wear. Everybody have a laugh. It's almost the type of thing one would do just to be a pain to people. Oh, you can't have these shoes in this room. You got these shoes into the building. But when you go in the room, you have to put on the I'm in the room shoes for the heck of it. I'm wondering if everybody else's look like that. Now you can see their dress code. I like I, I like the uh, kind of casual version of this, where like okay, they don't have the shirt all the way buttoned. You know, you got the the weeaboo long hair thing going. Let's otaku for life, right? It gives me a Battle Royale vibe. I think that for some of you listening, that may be where you're more familiar with this kind of look. School uniforms would be a good thing to have in the U.S. Now, that's something that you don't want as a kid because you feel like, oh, well, you're encroaching on 
uh, my individuality or it's it just bossing me around some more. But some of these kids have really got to get in line these days. Gosh, everybody gets to be a brat online because there are no consequences. Now, and this guy, uh, what, is it Bow Wow? Is it what this guy? He's a rapper, right? Something. He has a lot of merchandise. Is it authentic? Is it stolen? Don't know for sure. I mean, come on, he has some shoes he can sell them that aren't even out yet, right? Check it out, the new Jordans. Brand new Jordans, not even out yet. Why do you have them? LeBron James couldn't even get his hands on those. He holds on to his wheel. You got to stop people from stealing your ride, man. How do you do that? You take the steering wheel. He talks up his car like it's amazing. And, you know, maybe it would impress some people, not me so much. All right, the first car we see, 911 Turbo. There's some bikes. There's Lotus Elise. See a TVR, another Porsche. It looks like a Cayman. And here we are with the little Econo box with a like an incredible Hulk theme going where it's like the Hulk is busting out of it. Okay, unique. Not necessarily a great thing to have in a car. So it's like the Hulk has tried punching his way out of the car. Now look how excited he is to see his own car here, huh? It's even got like these little hairs on the top. It, no thank you. Man, I would be afraid as shit to drive anywhere in Tokyo. Just the confusion, the traffic. Frankly, I don't like driving around cities in the U.S. And I can speak English. Read it. Dun, 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 dun. This was, uh, is it Far East Movement? They were the ones who had that like a G6, like a, like a G6. So I'm fly, like a... Yeah, but here, they're pretty much unknown. And they were actually the first act out of Asia, I, I believe, to get number one on the Billboard Hot 100 in America with, with that G6 thing. All right, so we got a wink joke right there. Not sure if they keep that in on TV. And look at this. This is more energetic. We got the sped up dancing. Look at the way it's lit. This is cooler looking. This is more visually compelling than what we would find in the first two films. This is where a lot of the franchise's style really comes from is with Tokyo Drift. Director Justin Lin breathed new light into this franchise, and though he had Fast and Furious, the fourth one, and Fast Five, I think the high watermark of the series, his first installment, it seems like he's really firing on all cylinders. Probably a four-banger, but... We're checking out the cars. There's Nas. She's got an RX-8, which is what you get if you can't afford an RX-7. Bazinger! Uh, yeah, Ooh, everybody has to look hot, right? This guy right here checking out the car, he's he's in something of, of recent. I think he might be in that, uh, supposedly created by Bruce Lee uh, show. It's called like Warrior, I think, on one of them channels. I don't think it's a streaming thing. It's on something like Stars, I believe. I think he's in that. I've seen his his name pop up in credits and just thought, oh hey, it's it was the the tall Japanese Asian dude in uh, Tokyo Drift. Booker net what can I do without your slippers? Oh, you mean Wabaki, Nila? That's it. Uh, what's her name? Is it Natalie? I think uh, you can tell I put a lot of research into this. He's picking up on her not being from around here. I think she's an Australian actress. This guy here uh, is on the left, anyways. I can't remember the actual name. He's the shredder in the second Michael Bay produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film. And 
not a hero, uh, big time uh, uh, entrance for Han right there. He's just kind of a guy in the background. We haven't made anything of him. Just one of the guys. And we can see here that uh, he he has some controlling nature over Neela. And we get into this that something about his uncle, big time Yakuza guy, real problem. Sean Boswell maybe could shave his chest because it's going up the shirt collar. And women, I don't think, really dig that. If you do, please comment below. So he's like, what's this? And now I got to learn about that. Now I gotta, I'm going to ask questions and the audience learns through me. I'm, I'm from where girls can do what they want. Yeah, well, you're in the wrong place now. This guy's face looks like it was smashed, doesn't it? There's nothing coming out. It's almost like a pug or a bulldog. Yeah, the cute, the mafia. He's going to have to explain a lot of stuff to the whitey guy. Now, Han here, if we uh, are to believe that this is after many of the events in the Fast and Furious films, uh, after after five and, and what is it, part of six? Yeah, most of six, was it? Uh, between six, during, he has some money and he gets to Tokyo. So maybe he wouldn't care so much if he just wants to see what the new guy can do in a car. Oh, catches it. We don't really have a shot like that in the first movie, do we? This movie still looks new, doesn't it? I could make the case that the Fast and Furious and Too Fast look old. Can he drive? Can he drive? You know what DK stands for? Donkey Kong Country? Drift King. What's drift? Oh, you about to find out. Everyone's cheering. In practical uh, purpose of it, drifting is not... It's not. It's show-off-y racing, but it's not going to be a solid racing line. Because if it could, people would do this in NASCAR or, or Formula One or something, wouldn't they? Mona Lisa, the Drift World, rebuilt everything. This is Han's baby right here. I'm not so familiar with what he's got. It, is it a... Uh, I think it's a Nissan. I'll take another look here. Giving him a little crash course in drifting, you know, because he obviously that Hulk car is set up for drifting, right? All right. And our villain, he's got a 350Z. At the time, the qu quickest, uh, most powerful available Nissan. In theory, when the movie takes place, one would more likely have a GTR. Because it's hard to say what year this movie really takes place. I mean, hell, if it's taken place after or during Fast and Furious 6, it, things just don't really add up, do they? It's, everybody should have iPhones. Ready. She it's the subtitle says set, but she always says set go. Even at the end they have like the same two chicks and it's like ready. Set go. Go. And they make this look uh quick. They this looks energetic. We look like we see people racing through a parking garage, don't we? There's not any uh 
fanciful going plaid effects in this, which we, we saw in the first one when, you know, they hit the NOS. You see some in the second movie as well. Oh, man, he sure did stay still for a bit, didn't he? Han is so chill, and he's eating his biscuit. Biscuit, cracker, chip. I don't know what you want to call it. Oh. Look at all of the drifting guys. Now, wouldn't it just seem dangerous as all hell to be anywhere near this? They make a big thing out of using the elevators to catch up with the race. I don't think we really need to cut through that. We're, we kind of uh, stylistically zoomed in there to show how close they're coming. And obviously he hits the wall. Oh, he has made a mess. Uh, yeah, there's... A little bit of breaking the fourth wall. Wink at the camera right there. I just got in the elevator with all the babes. Yeah. Fashionably late Han. Really liking those chips. The Han cosplay, guys. Underrated. I hear they're going to have some justice for Han coming up. It will be addressed. Oh, we are just going into everything. What we hit? I mean, at that point, you're you're not just breaking this car; you're breaking other cars. And hell, this guy's even waiting for him. Trying to pinpoint what it is he is driving here. Um, is it like an S13? And is it Sylvia? I'm not sure. Th that is a smooth drift right there. It, it looks like if you watched it again, it looks like they kind of came to a stop though during the shot there. Oh boy. Yeah, I think we have a winner. Uh, let's see how bad the American did. Where is he? Oh, come on. I wear so much black and my car's all black. Hell, it's even matte black. I've got to be the bad guy. Oh, jeez. Yeah, your car's not even functional at this point, buddy. Go ahead, everyone have a laugh. Don't leave town. Simple words. It means you're going to owe me some favors. There's going to ha be some consequences to your actions tonight. So where have you been? I want to really drive home the point that I was in the Navy, so every shirt I wear will say Navy. And that will somehow justify how I am one of ten people in the town slash biggest city in the world with a gun. Have you been racing, Sean? Well, of course, it's what I do. Now set me up with an awesome car so I can win us some money. That's it. I'm pulling out this giant phone. <laughs> what? I can't race in jail? You gonna live on my roof? Live by my rules. Can somebody supercut all the time that's been said? Alright, I'm just going to go back in the closet dead. One of 
of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. Uh, I think he needs to get a bike. Now, here we are with an RX-7. This is a, I think, a full veil side body kit. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I didn't recognize the car because there's so much of the exterior changed. And I would say for the worse, because the RX-7 is considered one of the best looking, this being the, uh, what what do they call it? The Ifini F FD3S... Uh, it was, uh, was it 4th gen? Was it? Oh, no, wait, was this 3rd gen? Oh, shit. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. Really. I, and, the you know, the appreciating value of them pretty much uh, states as thus. This is a vague thing to tell a guy to do. There's a guy in there with a paw. He owes me some money. Go get it. Okay. Um, where am I? You realize I don't speak Japanese for shit? And you're going to make me just go into this bathhouse? This is... I'm underage. Oh, hairy chest. Okay, I, I think I see a bear tattoo. Okay, there's a bear paw. Maybe the guy had a shirt on when he owed you the money. And you saw the paw up around the neck. Maybe that's what this is about. Um, oh, oh boy. Size mismatch here. Considerable. Moobs. Okay, now... I don't know what their laws are for beating up minors, but this looks kind of bad. Now you take some, you take a, a what a bump like this. You want to not have that be actual asphalt. Okay, fine. I'll give you the money. Did you need to throw them around? And we keep our money kind of uh, rolled up in a cylinder as. Letty and the guy she raced did in the first film. A little bit of a throwback. Well, okay, a callback, whatever. It's, I'm sure that it wasn't intentional but for that purpose, though. Yeah, sick of Beyonce. What? So he, he's mentioning Beyonce, LeBron James. Things that are still kind of relevant, for better or worse. Oh, you think you get to negotiate the terms of what you owe me? You don't. And I th we're going to go to the little Pachico parlor. This is what Konami has decided to get into instead of video games because that's where the money is. You want to bet on ball bearings, I guess. Uh, what are they playing? Is it Mahjong? Little tiny table. What's he doing here? He's paying me back for that crippled beer can sitting in my garage. Gaijin. The, uh, the honky of Tokyo. Yeah, well, that word, what does that mean? Ready to take that 86 Corolla off your hands. Is it an 86 or is it a Corolla or is it an 86? Put up the 72 Skyline. Done. Uh, I think in 72 Skylines can start, the, there's some of those are starting to go for some cash. You can get a hundred grand for it. Uh, a first gen GTR.
shipments late. I wonder what Han was really into here. I mean, you you kind of get the sense that maybe he w- he's a good guy. He's he's a nice he's a, he he helps the protagonist. But maybe he just made an error along his ways and did a little drug dealing. Maybe. Is it human trafficking? What what is the shipment? Look at that phone. Does that stand out? You think they still got pay phones in Tokyo at the time that this movie takes place? Which is what? Maybe 2014? Really need to stop following me around. Uh, what is she doing here? Oh, he's not my boyfriend. You don't want to be part of his world. He's a bad guy. Is it cold enough to be wearing fur? Oh no, you can't be talking to her, white boy. Zero for one, cowboy. He's trying to... He's trying to play the Sherlock Holmes here. Now this is... Uh, go find a nice Japanese girl so the rest of the white girls. Does she qualify as white? Uh, this is a, a bit green screenery here, but... You know, not the worst looking stuff. I see faker shit now with Black Widow sliding under a semi truck like they did with the Civics in the first film here. At least they actually put the Civic under. Yeah, the semi trucks are never jacked up that high and they always have things dangling underneath them. But there's a difference. All right, we do some business, 50% of something better than 100% nothing. And he's going to make a deal here. Like, I want you to teach me how to drift. Hans comes across as this weird philosophy guy. He's almost Yoda of the drift world. He has odd ways about him. You're DK's kryptonite, even though he kicked your ass. I don't really think you've proven that you're his kryptonite. It looks like a skyline just went blazing by. We're going to hit the NOS in our RX-7. And if you can go fast enough, the cops don't even bother chasing you. And I think fast enough is like, what, 155? And it's looking at kilometers per hour, and the cops are just like, screw it. I don't know how you have the room to go that fast. You go over 180 kilometers per hour, they don't even try. I'm going to lag this country already. Now they show the pedals there, and... The RX-7 actually did have those milled out uh, pedals. I, I forgot I forgot the term for it, but it had the the pedals with the holes in it because it, specifically to cut weight on the car. And now every car they have in this movie will have those added to it after market. All right, we got a hangout over here, but let me show you the real hangout. Now I'm confused. Is this his garage? And is and does he operate all this other stuff going on here? Girl on girl action. Two thousand six. Now we just have like a shitload of international models here ready for you. We we have a garage slash multitude of clubs. Because I it's like the connecting door is his garage. There's our uh Little dude, uh, is it Bow Wow? I, 
If I'm getting the rapper's name wrong, I don't really care that much. I will warn you. A lot of music plays through this with the lyrics, just, you know, touching on it. All right, she looks Italian. One of them looks somewhere else. I don't know what. He makes a good point here about picking up girls internationally. They'll go hang out with a guy just because they can understand him and he can make them laugh. They don't know nobody in town. But if you have the balls to approach them and just be fun, you get the ladies. I don't think outside the box, I tear it up. Like the way his Hulk is trapped in the box, tearing it up. Americano Snickers. All right, I'm going to bring a couple girls this way. I want you to watch. Is that what this... The guy is uh, a juvenile. That's the assumption we're going with. Yeah, I opened this door and from the club, and it is my fanciful giant-ass garage in Tokyo. The property value here, I can't even place. There's a... Uh, what, what, I think there might be an NSX or something. There's, yeah, yellow NSX. Saw 350Z. And now the, these little beds. Weird placement for this stuff. Hey, let's, let's get in our little full around cubicles. Oh, by the way, that's going to be your car right there. Uh, is that an Evo... Eight, I believe. I think the Evo Nine came came around two thousand six. I don't think they had it in here though. I I could be wrong. I kind of thought that as the Mitsubishi Lancer Evos go, the Nine was the coolest. The X slash Ten, I think you see more of, but the the Nine MR was. It is almost like the the best one to have in America. Now, they strangely enough, as they're imported to uh, England, they had different varieties of them that were far more powerful, like FQ400, which stands for effing quick, literally. Only without the effing, you see what I'm saying here? Like that, the the importing on that, they, something about the it, it it's like a first party tuning for it so you can get like a monster evo that you couldn't get elsewhere in england i think they even got uh higher up than that when it came to the uh the evo x i like how we also have those fishermen and they're just you know enjoying themselves over by the dock okay do they have a fisherman's license for this i don't know how it works but we're under the assumption just about everybody in tokyo has some interest in cars even Dad's fixing up this old Mustang, right? The guys, the guys at the dock are talking about drifting like they've done it before. Look, I know you're probably going around racing, and yeah, I've, I've got the racing bug too. It's got potential. Uh, there will be some payoff to this little Mustang. You know, you think of the an old like first gen Mustang, and you're thinking big muscle car. Though I mean, the, we one would call a pony car as the Mustang kicks off the like a little miniature, miniaturized, condensed version of the muscle car. But it, in reality, it's a fairly small car. There are times where cars got larger. A lot of cars are very big, bulky, and heavy now because of safety requirements. Uh oh, they're beating up your little dude. And I think during this fight we may uh, pick up pick up his name. I, I'm going to feel dumb for not remembering. Do they, does the dress code not have anything to do with what you got on your head? All right, I think he, he sold them a... A fake iPod, right? One that broke. I'm going to come in here and make things right. I'm Sean. 
I don't do refunds. Uh oh, this could be bad. The guy's got Yakuza connections. Here, I'll give you one. You want a refund? Here, here's an exchange, okay? Interesting. Now that guy in the background there does not look like a high schooler. Where are they getting all this red hair? They're dying their hair, right? You don't get that naturally out of the Japanese. I'm assuming as much. What's wrong with you, man? Now everybody's going to want a refund. Oh, but Neela appreciates it. Your life isn't any of my business. Oh, women love hearing that. Oh, you're about women's rights and what a woman does, that empowerment. No. You're an, you're a woke ally. This song sounds a lot like a ripoff of Tears of a Clown. Now we're looking at how they do some recreation around these ways. Oh, look, he's got some soccer moves here. We got like uh, something of a miniature soccer course here. It's kind of cool. Now I've heard of a, a like driving range elevated. But, I mean, come on, you got like soccer course on the roof. That's pretty cool. How'd you end up here? You know, the old Western cowboy make run for the border. Are we getting a Han movie? This is my Mexico. Oh, well, we know who already had a Mexico. Dom. You know I was going to wreck it, huh? Why not? Because it's a lot of money. I have money. If you have money, why are you dealing with this skeezy Yakuza group? I know that you got a pretty big profit from Fast Five. So I guess I'm not really understanding. Yeah, you made out with some money in six too, right? Am I wrong? All those people down there, they follow the rules. For what? Them fear lead them. The guy has a sort of a thousand yard stare philosophical type thing going he seemed more laid I wouldn't say, he he's laid back but he was uh, uh funnier more energetic like uh, more human in the movies after this I, you know with Giselle's passing I think that's affected him and it's carried over to this movie retroactively I don't think that they really thought this stuff out beforehand They've found ways to make sense of it to some extent. Okay, so we've got a couple of girls in a R32 skyline. Oh, sorry, R34. One of them, I think the one not behind the wheel, is a known drift... She's known in the drifting circles. Okay, so I'm going to show you why I drive. So that I can go through intersections that are almost vacant, spin around like crazy, and get the attention of ladies. That's why I drift. Would that really be his reason if he was so shook about Giselle getting killed? Quasi move on to the next girl or two that I put in the cubicle? Now, I'm not even going to say anything. You, you like my circle? Okay, we're we're getting the pin out, and we're going to write down some numbers. Whoop! That's how you get girls' uh, numbers in uh, 2006 slash 14 or whatever, guys. No, none of this uh, bump phones to exchange contacts. No wax on, wax off. You got to do it. First drifting done by these mountains. You learn about a little bit of this in Initial D. Uh, 
And so, uh, you know, good luck honestly getting to do any of this stuff. I imagine it would be crowded. You know, if not regular traffic, doesn't everybody want to drift at the same time? We're going to hang out with him as he uh, hawks merch. Sell rubbers to a monk. Hey, everybody, come watch this noob drift like you got nothing else to do. Right? Uh-oh, something is up, but we don't necessarily want to mention drugs, so let's just exchange some cash. We want that PG-13, bro. Oh, is that a, a Volkswagen he's got that's uh, Hulk busting? All right, we're selling shoes that people don't even try on. Yeah, we're learning by the docks. Hey, he treats this uh, Mitsubishi pretty well. These guys are starting to be like, hey, he's getting it. I could have sworn they had subtitles. And now they don't if you turn the subtitles on on Netflix. Those guys don't say it. Sometimes there is a conflict with the subtitles with these streaming things. And it's an annoyance. Remember my PlayStation 2, you turn subtitles on when you're watching DVD, and it would they would sometimes be there and not, no matter what you wanted, it'd be like, okay, a foreign name has shown up on the side of a building, and it's going to put it in subtitles in English. A bit distractingly so. Sean, where are you? What do they got going in the background there? Some videos about cars. Twink. Is it is Twink the Bow Wow? I hey Twink, get this guy. I maybe it is. The odd nickname. All right, now you're good enough to race with somebody. Oh, overtaking. That's a nice move right there. Uh, a bit computered up over here, but, you know, could look worse. Now we're actually going to have him competing against people. You're going to work your way up the chain, huh? There's a Toyota 8.6. I couldn't tell if it was a Torino or not. It depends on you know, pop-up headlights or fixed. You want the pop-up. Oh, he is having a fit. Oh, we lost a car. That are doing business. That gal over there with the white across her eyes, like she's in Blade Runner. You have to wonder how much of the culture is that authentic here. Like, there's movies try to take place in the 80s, or they do take place in the 80s, but people are dressed so fancifully. And then you see that and you assume people actually dress like that. And it's. Couldn't be further from the truth. We have a little instant messenger in class. Oh, you want to get a lobster? You can get it at the vending machine. Is this our little date? We're going to have a vending machine date? I'm not a total guy, Jean. I don't like that word. Outsider can mean different things. Mom died when I was 10. She came here from Australia 
when she finished high school. Went to hostess bar thing, and DK's grandmother took took me in. There's some kind of weird relationship thing there. My parents split up too. Plus, I uh, wreck cars in America. Mostly because of me. Were you wrecking their cars? Yeah, don't, well, you know, try to turn this into something you can relate. Oh, you, you're an outsider. I'm, I'm an outsider. I'm an outsider with my jaggy teeth. Now, I guess she has a whole crew of gals that work on stuff, work on her car. Like I said, everybody in this movie has some interest in cars. So now we're going to do our little ballet. You know, when I was young, we used to go out here and drift. I'm not buying it for a second that she's doing any of this. It's stupidly calm. And we will get a you know quite the CGI shot here. You gotta hope everybody has the same idea with drifting here, so you don't pile up. You won your first race the second day you had your license. I beat this rich kid. It's not that's not the thing we saw at the beginning of the movie, is it? The second day he had his license? It's just the moment. Not dangerous at all. The, the, it's not much of a romantic vibe, but I guess there's a shot at it, huh? All right, we're about to have some turmoil here when DK shows up. Oh, we got a Hulk comic. Okay. Probably got that from Twink. Grab another set. Whoa, you're going through tires too quick. Where's the money coming for him? For all this, man. The tires are not cheap. Uh-oh. It's the 350Z squad, guys. DK, grab a chair. Uh-oh. I've got a mustache now, baby. Trying to grow a mustache. That's what it looks like to me. Mmm, we ain't stepping in. Only thing you'll be driving is a wheelchair. I like that line. Speaking Japanese. That's what's in it. So didn't he say gaijin? Lots of spitting. That guy is all about the spitting, man. He really got something in for her, Twink. You didn't just play fire. You soaked the matches in gasoline. Will that effectively neutralize the matches? Can you still light matches that way? Moistened? Uh-oh. I'm thinking DK must have slapped you around. We need to talk now. Notice how in the first movie we have scenes of people driving up to where we're going to have the dialogue, the night transition, all this. We get out of the car. It's a 10-second sequence here. We need to talk. To the point. Modern filmmaking. I am a gaijin. And you're going to start bun buttoning up that shirt, too. Okay, so you have a few CDs on the wall. So what? Oh, we're dropping an F-bomb in the Fast and Furious movies, are we? 
don't recall that. I've seen this on TV quite a bit, actually. This is almost like Predator or Die Hard. It's on TV and you end up watching it. You doing anything for a buck. Implying at one point she might have been a lady of the night. My whole thing is getting really close to people and then kind of looking in a 45 degree angle with my head and then kind of like looking them in the eye, but I've got my head tilted. And that's what I call intimidating. We're the same. Not you and him. It's all about trying to relate to this gal. There's more fighting over this woman than there is in all the other women in the series. Combined. All right, we're just going to work on this car, and uh, we've got a girl here watching, so she's helping, right? Oh, what's the matter, Neela? What do you think of the name Neela? Mm. It, you, you don't want it too bizarre of a name, and you don't want a name that ten people in the room have, you know? Video game noises. I don't think those were actually video games, but that's what the subtitle said. And uh, the uncle, the big shot uncle guy gets out of here. Look, we got an intimidating intro for him. Uh, Sonny Chiba, right? He, he goes by another name, Sonny Chiba. Some that I believe he was uh, in Kill Bill. Uh he may not have been. I, I, I know that he's the guy who played the, the Street Fighter in the Street Fighter movies in the 70s, not related to the games. I think there was a scene where he, like, pulled a guy's scrotum out or dick or something in a fight, and that was like, oh, no. It's almost, it was it, not, uh, not uh, Bruce Lee exploitation film, but one of the 70s martial arts things along the fad. And we're showing you how the culture here is a little different. Look at how nice and respectful we must be to the boss. Look at these pronouncers. I don't understand half of what I'm looking at. Some money's missing, and it's your guy Han, and you need to go get even. Then how is it I am able to figure out that your partner is stealing from us? Dun, dun, dun. And this guy's eyebrows are the most uh, fist in the North Star looking eyebrows I've ever seen on a human, man. He is Kinshiro. There's an old saying. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. For want of a nail, the horseshoe was lost. For want of a horseshoe, the steed was lost. For want of a steed, the message was not delivered. For want of an undelivered message, the war was lost. We've got a saying over here, nip it in the bud. Dun, dun, dun. He's stealing. You got to go kill him. I miss your father. He said, the way he brings this up sounds like he, ha he killed his dad because he did something. I miss your father. You know, in a way, it's like I, I, could, ha I could kill you too. And I guess I'd miss you, huh? I, let me remind you of somebody else I've killed so you don't screw this up, right? Is that the threat there? We've got little tiny cups we got to drink out of. Car approaching. Uh-oh. Stuff is going down when the hammer spins around somebody watching. 
Let's go sort this out. Twink, you got my back, right? I vouch for you, put my reputation on line for you. We were partners. You can't steal side deals. Come on. We ain't in the Boy Scouts. You know I steal. That's what I do. Takashi, that's his name. DK, just a little. I got a little gun. Uh oh. Come on, Twink, to the rescue. Hit the emergency quick drop of the door button. Everybody get in quick. Dun -dun 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 -dun. We're going to have a balls out car chase here, guys. Buckle up. Because I don't think the characters did. Quick, I got to get to my Veil Sight Arc 7. Whoop. I don't care if I hit you. Scrape. I wonder if it would take that wing off. Everybody. 350Zs assemble. Uh, you know, you get a little bit of a head start on somebody. You can kind of slip into some traffic. You should... Should be able to get away, I would hope. It's not like you just jumped into a pair of slow cars. And while we're getting away, we want to do a little bit of drifting also. Whoa. Is this not more exciting than the chase between the bikes and the and the Supra? Ch Challenger, or no, is a Charger at the end of the Fast and the Furious? Because I'm pretty sure this is better. Wow, this is uh, quite a tunnel, it looks like, over here. Oh, man, you want to get in a little cube and be in the middle of that? Not me. Now, what's wrong with this guy? Is there something wrong with his speedometer? I'm such a psychopath, I'm going to start ramming. No no regard for my own car. Kind of looks like he's dinging up his 350Z a little more than the other way around. Nice crash. How fatal was this? That's what I'm wondering. And we really like to see these pedals, don't we? Zip, zip, zip. And uh, I think we're about to see a kind of a effects layered up shot over here of their built replication of uh, this crosswalk. Oh, ramming speed. The bad guys ram. So much cutting and weaving in between stuff. Oh no, Sean, there's people ahead. Run! You can you can see in some of these like medium shots that there's a green screen there, and this is a CGI car going over. Um, some the definitely in the helicopter shot, it was like a CGI thing with the smoked tires. All right, keep an eye out for a car coming up here. 
uh, right soon. Oh, Sean, get your drift together, boy. At what point does the chase end? Oh, boy. We have whipped around. We're driving a reverse gun out for Harambe. Oh, no. Got clipped in the end and pitted. Yeah, that is some confidence right there. And a Mercedes hits him. Now, you'll note that at the end of, what was it, six... We see the like the retroactive flashback. Jason Statham gets into a large Mercedes sedan to go hit Han. Stands over him and talks a bit. I guess left by the time Sean caught up by foot. Blows up. I'm I'm kind of wondering now. I haven't seen Calvin and Hobbes or. Fate of the Eight, whatever. Is there a possibility they pulled Han out of this and we're assuming he died in there? Because something may have happened. Uh, but, I mean, if, if we're getting that extra scene of it, you know, the recreated, updated, retconning, it seems different. Now, look at the way how all of the diegetic sound drops off and we just get the... The non digetic score playing here, and the characters are running off, and they're like, okay, shit got real. We, we need to get some help. It's it's time to come clean to my dad. What are we going to do? Just, just trust me. He takes women in. Oh, no. DK knows where I live. Twink, did you rat on me? Got a gun. Uh-oh. Oh, trading blows with a guy with a pistol. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Yeah, dad to the rescue. I'm in the Navy. Or I was. Does his shirt say Navy? Still. It's probably a shirt from the first night he saw him. So much fighting over girls. It's okay. I'll go with you. I mean, Dad's got the gun on DK, so I guess you can stay with them. Because he needs to back down as the gun... It kind of seems like he wasn't in the negotiating window, right? I'm putting you on a plane tonight. Good idea. Don't argue with me. I did this. I can't run away. It's time to be a man. His shirt does say Navy. <laughs> Gotta do this. All right, fine. I'll help you. This is what being a dad is all about. Getting your son a good drift car. At least you're not redoing my mistakes. Running away from your problems. Oh yeah. We're going to have to get to work, boys. But first, got to have a little meeting with the boss. We got to sort out some rules. All right, what do we got? We're leaving town. Look, I know some people. Yeah, I'm sure you know some people, Twink. DK wants your head, all right. Trouble you just made with Kamada. That'd be Sunny Chiba. You done here, bro? We want to throw the bro in there just so we know we wrote this for a black guy. 
DK answers to him, huh? Then I know what I gotta do. I gotta go see him. Oh, but you can't just go walk in there. There's a lot of mob boss you can't walk. You can't just walk it. One does not just... What is it with the uh, Sean Bean meme? One does not just walk into Mordor, so, right? Look, I've been stashing some stuff for Han in these Hulk hands. All right, slowly getting this out. There we go. You're going to need it. Get out. Come out of this place alive. Oh, money, eh? Hey? Don't you need it? No. It's cool. Th doesn't this seem like a more serious drama than the first two movies? Am I mistaken? In a way, Fast and Furious, the fourth one, four, kind of reverts. Like, I thought this was putting the franchise on the right path. It, it loses a step, but then it regains with five where it becomes a big heist movie. I suppose one could say there's a heist movie element to the original Fast and Furious, but it's so much uh, layered in knocking off point break it doesn't feel like pulling off the big heist the movie like Ocean's Eleven alright I've got some money I want to see the boss eh okay this could be weird uh oh everybody in the club goes silent what's a white guy doing here You'll excuse me, I need to put on some Burt's Bees lip balm. Burt's Bees, the only lip balm I've been using since 2007. Yeah. Who's your friend? Oh, he's no friend. I have something which belongs to you. Oh, not so fast, buddy. Let me look that over. Make sure you don't got no no weapons. Hmm, it's a very nice bag. <laughs> that would that would be a good joke, right? You think you can walk in here? Dump some cash and walk out? Oh, it ain't that simple. Hey, I didn't steal it. How about that, buddy? I don't know what Kamada's beef is with him exactly. He should be calling off DK. You know, your nephew and I embarrass ourselves badly. Oh, did anybody say you could talk? Yeah, I thought so. You better start bowing. I've got a cigar. And I think it might have actually gotten longer between takes. How do you plan to accomplish that? A race. That's how I settle things in America. <laughs> what is the mob boss's business? What are you buying? What are you selling? We never know. Loser leaves town. Man, I feel like I saw something else recently with a Loser Leaves Town plot. Can't think what it is. Alright, the police have uh, uh, sectioned off an area here. Crime scene. We can kind of scope this out. What can we use for our race? Oh man, the police took all the cars. Oh, that RX-7. Uh, you know, surely, the, um, if if you had the choice, maybe the NSX would have been the car he would have used here. 
Not that they ever drew attention to it, but here's Mona Lisa. I guess since it couldn't move, they left it, right? What's it got under the hood? What do you know? The engine looks like it's in pretty good shape still. I believe that's like a Skyline engine in that. I, th I think that's what they did. I think they dropped the Skyline uh, GTR engine into that car. And now they're going to put that in the Mustang. So I think it's a Mustang with a Skyline GTR. I, shit, I could be wrong. It, they end up making a pretty cool Mustang. It's not the big V8 American Power. They, they've they married the two. Yeah, isn't that a Skyline engine? You know, you can boost those up to 900, no problem. So, I mean, I'm not assuming that's what he's got there, but All right, we're going to do what work we can in the time we have. How much time did Kamada give you to get your car together? He gave you some time to prep, didn't he? All right, what are we going to do? We're going to test this. Okay, something's not right. We got a montage. Shop class montage. Ah, no, something still ain't right. Almost there, Twink. DK picked this road for a reason. This is his mountain. He's the only one to ever make it to the bottom. So what does that mean? Everybody dies racing here? Look, I know we got a big race ahead of us, but we want to make sure that the paint job is good. Yeah, there we go. Make sure we got the racing lines. Not a bad looking Mustang. This could be a, a kind of trophy collector type thing. Unfortunately, Tokyo Drift, though I would say renewed the franchise, showed that it didn't have to focus on one particular character it made money it it was underperforming though i think this made the least of the three uh to that point in time and one could then assume that after this direct to video could have been the path going forward and it most likely would have been if not for the the seeming promise of now we can get vin diesel back vin diesel has returned to the franchise Ah, uh, he's a big boss man. He's got the, what, the S500 over here? Ooh. If we're going to have a loser leaves town race, I'm here to spectate. No elevators for me. And there's the Blade Runner gang. All right, what do we got going here? We're going to... Sync up our phones so that we can record this and watch. Oh, yeah, so high tech. Get that flip phone out with the, you know it's got to be terrible video. This is how we do it in Japan. We don't have a V10 RAM following the action, or, or leading the action for that matter. I mean, hell, honestly, I'm kind of surprised how the Rams stayed so far ahead of them during their race. See, the trick here is they know what DK's bring into the race. He don't know what they got. And that makes all the difference. All right, we're going to bring out the Yakuza guys to start the race. We're, we're going to show you a little bit about that. Because you're going to see some missing fingers. All right, is the Yakuza guy going to, like, take his bra off and throw it? Because that would have been cool. And there we go. It looks like a landing strip with that lighting. What is the practical purpose to this road? Man, he... Sean, you are way behind early in an unproven car. 
Dun, dun. It's a nice looking race though. It's hard to get a night scene to look like it's in authentically shot in, in the night, honestly. These days, I've seen it done way worse, honestly. I, it, a lot of the times today, it's just, can we just get in a studio and change the values? We're going to green screen it up. We're, okay, fine. Just, uh, just in post, change everything to blue. There we go. Fine. Drop a filter. Here we whip around. So uh, quite a bit of tire marks on the road, I guess, from all the racing that happens over here that nobody makes it down the hill. Oh, cut them off. Sean has taken the lead. Oh, but DK ain't having this. Oh... It's time to get dirty. You gonna send him down the mountain? So, man, you see a pedal, you take a shot, guys. What do they call it? Is it like drilled, drilled brakes? Uh, no, that's that's totally different. Cross drilled brake. That that's on. On the brake itself. Now the pedals. Oh, you don't have you don't have the pedals, Sean. Why didn't you switch those out? Oh, hang on tight. Drift, Sean, go. Powers through. Overtakes. How much road do we got left? Sean's the boss. Let's go. Oh, we can see the danger below there. Is this not exciting enough? Is that it needed a tank thrown in here? Is that what this needed? Yeah, you can see the CGI'd up that some degree. You need to jump out of airplanes, whether they're on the ground blowing up or in the air. Is that what we really needed with this franchise? Because it's like, where do you take it after you get to uh, the different styles of racing? I guess if you want to keep things going, you have to keep coming up with some bullshit. Oh, no. Spun around. Oh, Sean's in second. And coming down the final stretch, Sean. We got the boost gauge. Oh, we are we are beating up Dad's Mustang, but it's for a good cause. Cause the lever, the loser has to leave town. That's it's all worth it, right? Man, this guy, he he does not care. He will ram his 350Z into whatever and Uncle will fix it? How he's losing spoiler. Oh. I don't think he ever hits a NOS switch, does he? God, there is a lot of drifting, a lot of turns in this race. Oh, so much spinning around, and now DK is losing control. It's time for you to roll. And we're almost there, and the... Oh, the 350Z is landing. Almost on top of me. You can see he's like, he looks like he's about to lose his lunch right there. A little slow-mo effects. It, it's, it doesn't look bad, and we have a winner, baby. That's my boy right there. Yeah. Crawl out of that car, grunting. Now you brought shame. Well, I guess you don't have to leave Tokyo.
and you winner gets me, right? Let's see what the boss has to say. Oh, come on, you could be a little more congratulatory, couldn't you? Really? You're going to side with him? Well, he did win. It makes sense. I, I'll allow it. Uh, whatever he said was not in the subtitles. So sh okay, now we got the Far East movement going again. Do, do, do. There is a lot to say about the ending. We have now jumped back onto the after-school drift scene. Look at the energetic way this is all put together, the dynamic camera work, the editing, slow motion. The, the music's a little more thumping. And now we have a new Drift King, Sean. He's the new DK, right? This part forward is in Fast Furious 7. New guy around here beating everybody around Asia. Not tonight, Twinkie. You think it said Twinkie right there? I think he said he knew Han. What? Now that opens the door for a lot of potential Han backstory. Said Han was family. What did I tell you, man? Toretto, they talked about a team in the first movie. After that, everybody's family. Is this the, the origin of everybody I work with is family, according to Dom? All right. Let's race. This sets up a potentially really cool scene. And when you when you watch Fast Furious 7 and you get to this, you're like, oh my God, we are finally going to do it. So many years in the making. We're like, it's like 10 years in the making, man. What, what's going to happen here? This is going to get crazy. Nothing. They never show the race. Oh, Dom. I think you can see that the tight, uh, very, very tight buzz cut here on uh, Vin Diesel. And now it's just like a totally shave thing. It's a little bit of discrepancy. I think he's got some bigger guns on the arms too. And this ain't no 10 second. Man, I would, I would like to see how the heck Vin Diesel gets out of this. Because remember, Toretto don't lose. How's he going to win with with the muscle car? Like, what's he doing? All right, look for it. Listen, it's ready. Set, go. I'm the, I'm the new boss. My gal gets to usher in the race. Yeah, I, you want to see this race. Am I wrong? We never see the race. Big disclaimer not to do any of the stuff done in this movie. I don't think the first movie said that so much, did it? Um, maybe they weren't as concerned. But yeah, that's what you get here. And, um, you know, I don't think this one has an ending scene at the end of it. That, I mean, that kind of is it. But it sets up an interesting thing where we can bring in a new character to the rest of the franchise. We got... Like, uh, Toretto can bring in the new DK, right? We could see that race. Nope. And say just says, hey, I just want some information about the guy that killed Han. Or, okay, well, I don't really have a whole lot I can say. All right, bye. So many weird, bizarre things happen in 7, and I'm telling you, it's not a good movie. Don't mistake Rotten Tomato scores as a good movie. That was a lot of, it's so sad that Paul Walker died. A, a cool, righteous dude who didn't need to go down that way. I got it. This is his last movie understood it doesn't mean it's a good movie it's all over the place it probably should have been scrapped oh but it made a billion dollars so who are you to justify this call it made a billion dollars because people felt sad for paul walker not because the movie's good and if there's anything i've learned lately it's that movies don't have to be good so there you go fast and the furious tokyo drift it's almost a pretty good movie it just some, some wonky things with the start it's predictable for one. I, I got to give it that, but it's energetic. I thought that this put the franchise on the right path, and Justin Lin brought what what he needed to to this. Now he maybe not the right choice for Star Trek, hated Star Trek Beyond, but a good choice for Fast and Furious.